they want the organs from the, uh, for, certainly from all children, but especially the people who are 16 to 30. See, and you cannot get any, cannot get any organs from a cadaver. Every organ that's transplanted is a healthy organ, and you can only get healthy organs from living persons. You cannot get any organs for transplant from a cadaver. Every, everybody who, um, who has their organs taken, they are all dissected alive. That it's, it's a form of slavery. They've made slaves of all of us. It's involuntary servitude, what they've done. I started a special care nursery in Cardinal Leonard Children's Hospital in 1963. And we were instrumental in, we helped invent the ventilator. We invented how to take blood pressure on premature babies. We, we were the ones that invented nutrition in the vein. Uh, we identified the need for magnesium, the need for zinc, the need for copper. Uh -huh. And and uh, we did it with metabolic beds. We did every every intake and output and did these things. So we were a leader in the field of neonatology. The hospital still is a leader. I started to investigate brain death. and. Uh, um, it, it took about two years till I understood the language of brain death. Uh, uh, brain death is is a lie. Uh, it, it's a, a, a lie that's been told over and over again. So people don't even realize it's a lie anymore. But it's been a lie from the beginning. Continues to be a lie. The way it occurred was that Christian Bernard did the first heart transplant in South Africa in 1967. Mm -hmm. Three days later, they did the second heart transplant. It was done in Brooklyn, New York. And what what they did is they cut the beating heart out of a three-day-old baby and transplanted it into an 18-day-old baby. And at the end of their surgeries, a short time after the end of their surgeries, both of those babies were dead. It was illegal. It was immoral. And so they had to do something to make it legal. And so what they did is they set up a committee at Harvard, and the committee invented brain death. Uh, the committee did not do studies on dogs or cats or rats. They didn't collect data on human beings. They just invented brain death. And they had no patient data. They had no basic science studies. Um, a lot of people think that brain death means flat brain waves. They're not even required to do brain wave testing. They, they studied nine patients, and two of the nine still had brainwave activity. And then they concluded, no longer is it necessary to look at brainwaves. So it's not required to look for brainwave activity. So when they're doing the, the transplantation on people they say are, are brain dead, they're, they're, all going alive. To, they're all alive yeah. and completely recoverable. They're all alive. You cannot. So they're harvesting organs out of people who are who are in some way conscious. They just can't communicate. Well, consciousness. But they feel pain. Consciousness and pain. You, uh, it's one thing uh, not to demonstrate consciousness, and then we use words like unconscious. But unconscious does not mean that there's no consciousness. It just means that we do not observe consciousness, and there's a difference. Just because a person can't demonstrate pain doesn't mean they don't have pain. You know, a very good example of that is they, they give paralyzing agents uh, uh, when they take the organs so that they don't move and they don't oh, squirm. That's so horrible. And, and even if they don't move and don't squirm, when they cut on them, their heart rate goes up and their blood pressure goes mm -hmm. up, and, which is the response to pain. And, but they can't demonstrate that they have pain. Because they're paralyzed. They medically they're paralyzed. paralyzed them. Yeah. So they can't respond by... Right. So in any event, they in, in, invented brain death to mainly to get organs, but then also so they don't waste money on treating people who aren't ever going to get a job, who, who are just going to live and, and not die. And so, to see what brain death is, it's primarily a way to get organs. No, it's no different than what they did in Germany. It's exactly what they yeah, did in Germany. Was safe. Was it's exactly what they did in Germany. And, and, and actually, um, in my research many years ago, 
uh, when you had to do the research by going to what we call the stacks in the library to get the old the old journals. And I found articles in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 1919, 1920, of a doctor in Germany who wrote to the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association and telling him what the doctors were doing in Germany. He signed it, the overseas correspondent, and told the uh, doctors in the United States what was going on in Germany, and that was before Hitler. So, so in many ways, what's going on in this country is very similar to what was going on then. And it took World War II to stop those doctors. But then what happened was that their records all went to the Russians. But no, I thought that with through the, the Operation Paperclip, the, the doctors, we brought the German doctors to the United States. Some of them came to the United States. Very few of them got charged with anything. Very, very few of the German doctors. And the German doctors were already in, involved in doing evil things. Uh, uh, before Hitler. Uh, remember I told you in 1920, Hitler didn't come into power until 1933 or 34. And and uh, Hitler was elected, by the way. Okay. Sure. Yeah. He was elected and then became the dictator. Uh, um, and so, so, yes, it is very similar to what was going on in, in Germany and, that was, and it was the German doctors. Uh, and I'm not opposed to doctors for lots of reasons, and I'm, I'm uh, excited about many of the advances that have happened in medicine. But there's the, a fine line, though. There's a, there's a, an ethical, an ethical and a moral line. Ethical and moral line. You know, those are rooted in words. Uh, you know, one is Greek and the other is Latin, and they they are very similar in the in the sense that they. Both revolve around how one ought to behave, and ought is a very special word. It, it, it's rooted in the word owe, so it's how how the doctor ought to behave because he owes it to his patient to behave in a certain way. So, ethics and morals, and so what they've done to that. And like when I went to college into medical school, I learned ethics. So, what, and I also studied biology. So, and biology is a study of living things. Ethics is how one ought to behave. So what they've done is put together bioethics, and they're like water and oil. They don't mix. You can't mix when you're studying what, what's already set in place, that's biology, with something with how one ought to behave. So you put them together and you get something that you can do anything you want with it. And yes, they do. there is actually no meaning behind that. <laughs> no, bi bioethics do is, what you will. <laughs> is, is a, a, a field that they are not ethicists and they're not biologists. They are people who are trained to carry out something. And, and the, the way that brain death works is that they, they get the clergy and the people in pastoral care uh, and and uh, to get involved and then in, in organ transplants they have a designated requester and a designated requester is usually a very nice person who dresses nice and and befriends the relatives can I get you a cup of coffee oh I know this has to be terrible on you We'll do everything we can to help you, and all of that is part of getting them indoctrinated to get their yeah to get their organs. And see, and you cannot get any cannot get any organs from a cadaver. Every organ that's transplanted is a healthy organ, and you can only get healthy organs from living persons. You cannot get any organs for transplant from a cadaver. The things I'm telling you is that you you are not allowed to hear. Uh, it, um, and because if you hear it, you will be upset, as you, all three of you are upset. And rightly so, you should be upset, because uh, um, whose organs do they want? They want the organs from the, uh, for, certainly from all children, but 
especially the people who are 16 to 30, and their life is in jeopardy. If they're unconscious and on a ventilator, they're going to get their organs, and they do everything to get their organs. And, and uh, once the organs are taken, you can't bring them back to life. And so that what they do is they tell the relatives, well, you, you know, your, your, your daughter Sally would really like to do something good, and this is a way to make something good out of this tragedy, and, and, uh, or your son. And the, while they have been getting organs from accidents and gunshot wounds, they now get more organs from overdose of drugs than they do from accidents and gunshot wounds combined. There are eight deaths a day from overdose in Ohio, and and they they get their organs is, is what they want. They're giving the policemen the Narcan to counteract the drug, which gets them into the emergency room, but it doesn't save their life. It gets them in the emergency room, and they still get their organs. And so...